The second step in the strategic workforce planning process is to establish the current state and the historical trends. Establishing the current state will include information on your existing headcount for the roles you have chosen to study. Establishing trends gets a little trickier as you need to establish historical patterns on factors like terminations and retirements. If your company hasn't undergone any of what I will call significant events impacting headcount, then this should be fairly straightforward. However, if your company has undergone events like mergers, transferring teams between organizations, and reductions in force, known as RIFs, or offered early retirement incentives, the numbers forming your trend will require a lot more judgment. In the example on this slide, you can see an upswing in engineers when the company purchased another engineering company in 2007. You can also see a reduction in the sales force in 2009. These types of occurrences will skew data like turnover rates depending on how the events were recorded. For these reasons, I like to record the events and the areas of the company which were impacted. When looking at the trending data, this allows me to judge whether the numbers are realistic or whether we need a combination of data and common sense judgment before we can use this data for forecasting. Depending on the type of workforce planning study you are doing, you may end up studying retirement patterns, especially if you are in a country impacted by the baby boomer wave. While people are eligible to retire at 55 in this particular company, the average retirement age is actually in the 60s. We can also look at trends over time to see if the retirement age in various regions of the globe or specific job roles is getting higher or lower over time. There are many analyses you can do with the workforce data, but this is one example supporting a longer term strategy. Companies can use this type of information to not only project retirements to forecast job vacancies, but also to predict what they will need to pay out in retirement benefits in the next few years. As you can see, establishing historical trends can be a bit more complex than just looking at historical data to see what patterns exist. This is why I'm not a big fan of automated workforce planning software, because it doesn't have the judgment needed to know what historical events may have skewed your data, for which you must adjust in the next step of the process.